The type of statistical test you run depends on the type of outcome, whether that's a proportion or a percentage um, with, you know, let's say categorical variables, or whether the outcome is a continuous variable, and whether it's a one sample or a two sample. And by one sample, what I usually mean is that you're comparing a column in a data set to a fixed value. So when you're checking a fact about a population, like did 4% of people, uh, you know, did 4% of people have the flu in 2016? And two sample tests are when you're comparing two different populations. So that might be men and women, it might be people from two, diff two different socioeconomic statuses. And two sample tests uh, you know, when you're comparing two groups, have certain types of tests that you run. And then when you're comparing more than two groups, there are other tests that you need to run. So let's say you're comparing the you know, average height or the average age for men and women. That's one type of test because there's two groups. And let's say you were comparing the average age for people of different uh, race and ethnicities because there's more than two possible values. There's a separate type of test you have to run for that. So if you're just checking a basic fact about the population, um, which means there is only one variable, you can call it an exposure variable or an outcome variable, there's only one variable that you're comparing against a fixed value. If that variable is categorical, this is a chi-square test. And if that variable is continuous, then this is going to be either a one sample t-test or a one sample Wilcoxon test. If you have two or more samples, in the situation that both your variables are categorical, you'll run a chi-square test. If you have one categorical value, uh, sorry, variable and one continuous variable, but there's only two categories in the categorical variable, this will be a two sample t-test or a Wilcoxon test. And the same situation, let's say you've got one variable that's categorical, but now it has more than two categories. Um, and then you've got another variable that's continuous. This will then be um, a one-way ANOVA test or a Kruskal Wallace test. And even though I have these tests separated by ORs, they're not the same test. Um, the test that comes before the OR is what you can apply if your data is normally distributed. The test on the right side of the OR is the uh, test to apply if your data is not normally distributed. We'll come back to that um, in a moment. And finally, if you have two variables that are both continuous, then the way to compare them is to do a Pearson test. Uh, if your uh, data is normally distributed or a Spearman correlation, if your data is not normally distributed. Notice that when you run a chi-square, you might notice that it actually says Pearson's chi-square test. When I write Pearson test, I'm really referring to the Pearson correlation test, not to the chi-square test. So just if you're ever running tests, just realize those are two different tests, even though they both have the word Pearson in it. So for continuous outcomes, some of the tests assume that the data have a normal distribution. And remember from our last lecture that a normal distribution basically looks like a bell curve where the data is not skewed and it looks like a kind of a, uh, has one peak and you know a gradual drop off on either side. And the tests that assume a normal distribution are the t-test, a one-way ANOVA test, and a Pearson correlation test. So in case you don't remember what a normal distribution looks like, the first histogram here has a uh, left skewed distribution. The second histogram here has a right skewed distri distribution. And the, di the histogram on the very right is normally distributed because it has one peak and kind of a nice tail on either side that's even uh, and symmetric. There are tests that 
don't assume that a normal distribution has to be there. And so in some sense, you can apply these tests to all data sets because you're not worried about having to check your assumptions uh, about the type of distribution. But oftentimes people will apply the tests we learned two slides ago when the data is normally distributed and they'll apply these tests when the data is not. And so instead of a t-test, you would do a Wilcoxon test if your data is not normally distributed. Instead of a one-way ANOVA test, you would do a Kruskal-Wallis test when you've got three groups and the continuous variable is not normally distributed. And similarly, if you're comparing two continuous variables that are not normally distributed, instead of a Pearson correlation, you would do a Spearman correlation. And these tests, what they typically do is they replace the raw values with the rank uh, when, when they get sorted. So you're actually in some sense comparing the ranks of the values rather than the raw values themselves. So even if there's you know, major skewness to the data, when you convert each of the points into a rank from one to let's say 10,000, where one is the lowest value and 10,000 the highest value, any of those diff, you know, magnitudes of difference get lost in there. And so these tests are a way to compare those ranks.